Well, what do I have here? The Predator Triton SE 500 that comes with a 16 inch QHD screen. I'm pretty excited about this one because I raved a lot about QHD laptops, QHD gaming laptops in the past. So there aren't really that many QHD options in the market right now. Um, I really talked about the Zephyrus G15 a while back and I did a few videos of those already. So go ahead and check that out right here. In addition, there are other options. It's just really hard to get them. Um, I know the G15 actually comes in and out of stock at Best Buy. And I think this one will also be in high demand. The Triton SE is a powerful all aluminum gaming laptop that when on sale could be a value product. If you're looking for a 16 inch QHD gaming laptop with superior build quality, there aren't really any other options that compete with this besides Razer. As an all-in-one package, can the Triton SE topple my number one pick as the best QHD gaming laptop of 2021? Let's find out. So this configuration comes with the Intel i7-11700H CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of an SSD. This also comes with the RTX 3060. The wattage here goes up to 105 watts. The panel is a 600 nit panel. This is very important when working outside. Sadly, it doesn't have G-Sync, so you don't get the buttery smoothness that you get with other G-Sync or FreeSync panels. In addition, this is my first 16 by 10 aspect ratio panel, and I really do like it. It does give you more visual experience. It does give you a bigger perspective, but really it doesn't matter for me if I would choose a laptop with a 16 by 10 or a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I really see no difference or added benefits. The brightness of this panel is much brighter than my Alienware um, ultra wide and you can see just the stark difference. This is actually good for outdoor use. I can definitely recommend using it for outdoors. And there's nothing else that really compares to that unless you're buying a Legion or a Lenovo laptop, one of those 500 nit screens. So the build quality of the Triton SE 500 is all aluminum. That's something that really sets up itself apart from other competitors and there are downsides to it. The downside is, is that it's super heavy. At over five pounds, I definitely think it is a heavier laptop. It is thin, but I would say that I would consider this as a thin and heavy laptop, so to speak. Moving on to other parts of the laptop, I really love the finish and design of the lid. It definitely has that metallic brushed metallic look that it's pretty rare to find in other laptops. And trust me, once you get a hold of this laptop, you can't really compare it to anything else. It has a really superior build design and quality. So if those of you for looking for a you know, well-built, well-designed laptop, this would be one of them. It's just a little bit heavy, but I definitely recommend the build quality if you don't care about weight. So I really like that this laptop has a full SD card reader, an HDMI port that does support G-Sync, and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. All right, and so here are the tech specs. It does not say how many watt hours. It is 99 watt hour battery. So I was able to get around five hours with the Intel processor and you can see that the 5.4 pounds, what a brick. So I really have no complaints of the keyboard. I really like the depth and the actuation force. The only complaint I have about it is the size of the keys. But otherwise, I got used to it. So the Triton 500SE has the RTX 3060 and this reaches up to 105 watts. Now this is above average when it comes to finding a gaming laptop and looking for a RTX 3060 up to this wattage and I definitely think it does suffice for QHD gaming. Now when compared to other 3060s like the HP Omen, you're losing about 10 to 15 watts and I definitely think that that isn't much of a drawback but you know with something this thin and light there definitely has to be some trade-offs so comparing it to the CyberPower Tracer it did get about 200 points less in Time Spy so I definitely think that it's not that much of a difference from that and the CyberPower Tracer does have a 120 watt RTX 3060 
So the CPU is the i7-11800H processor from Intel, and this was the new processor from last year that I think matches the bar with Ryzen 5000 series chips. Now looking at the turbo mode, I was able to achieve 13,200 points on Cinebench R23. In addition, the thermals were not good. I got 100 degrees Celsius, and I don't think that will suffice for me. It's so this laptop does get hot, just warning. Now when I bumped the performance mode down back to standard, I got 12,734 points on multi-core performance and this reached a max of 92 degrees Celsius. So I think that this is a usable setting and I definitely would keep it at this mode. In regards to fan noise, the decibels did not surpass 58 decibels. So this is on par with other gaming laptops. And I think that other YouTubers have said that the fan noise is extremely loud. Uh, so your mileage may vary. So overall, I still wouldn't choose this over the Zephyrus G15, just based off the fact that the RTX 3070 does play well with the QHD panel, and the RTX 3060 barely hits the average frame rates that I need, especially for first person shooters, I definitely need to get 117 frames at least on average, and the RTX 3070 definitely beats that 3060 in that regard. You cannot complain about the build of this laptop. It's honestly top notch, almost up there with Razer as far as build quality. It's super solid and it does sacrifice in weight. It actually is five pounds. So if you're looking for something more light and portable, the G15 wins in that regard. Still, if you really value that 16 by 10 aspect ratio on the panel and the brightness, this is the winner right here. So I hope you guys like this video. Definitely check out my other videos. I'll leave a link here and I will see you guys in the next review. Uh, I want to reach 1 million likes. So please, sarapakara, sarapakara, sarapakara.